welcome everyone to Foundry Summer School. We are in our third week. Can't believe time is flying by. And as of yesterday, we are officially in summer. So this is very exciting. Today, we will be talking all about uh, configuring your account. So we'll talk about how you can customize uh, your account and what those configurations are, as well as uh, specifically your in-course configurations. Uh, I'll go into detail of what those elements are and how to manage those in Foundry. Uh, but this is a great opportunity for you to customize content specific to your students and to your communities. Lastly, as always, I will also share a few pointers and suggestions on how to make the most of these customization options. I missed this, so to introduce myself, my name is Michelle Chin, and I am on our customer education team. And my whole job here is to create um, resources and content like this, so you all can better navigate Foundry and really get the most out of the platform and uh, out of your training as well. So with that, I'll dive right into some configuration options. So there are a few reasons I wanted to highlight first of why we invested in creating these configuration options over the past few years. Uh, we've always offered these throughout the courses, but we recently expanded what that looks like. So number one, for compliance. We do have a host full of courses that do meet content requirements for Clery Act, Title IX, and the Drug-Free Drug Schools and Communities Act. But there are also require student, these also require students to know and understand your specific policies around sexual misconduct, sexual mis or substance misuse. They should know what resources are available to them and who to go to if they want to report something. So each of our courses do provide an opportunity for you to upload your current policy directly into the course. And sometimes you can even upload more than one, um, depending on the content. And not only does this put the policy in front of the students, but you can also track who has reviewed and acknowledged it via Foundry through some of the reporting that we have. Some of the account uh, configurations will impact who receives which courses and can help make sure that the correct version is being taken. So for example, as I mentioned last week, we do have the new Assignments 2.0 technology that allows you to create training periods, and this makes retraining a lot easier. Think about locations too. For some courses, if you have campuses or students across state lines, you can actually tailor what uh, policies and resources they have access to, so it's relevant to them locally. Uh, while this doesn't necessarily apply to student courses, we do have some other content that does adjust based on state, on the state and their specific compliance requirements. For the student courses, though, making sure that locations are set up correctly, uh, the laws for that state will populate by default where learners can then explore others as well. And lastly, think about the learner experience and making it something that your students will want to go through. You can tell pretty easily if something is generic and straight from the box, um, especially if the EverFi logo is on it. By adding in configurations like your branding, use images that that are familiar to students. Have the communications come from names and people that they know. Doing this, learners will be more likely to really absorb and internalize the information they're receiving through the course. It also shows that this prevention strategy and program is a priority for you and that you are committed to educating around these topics for an overall healthier community with them in mind. All right, let's get into what these account configuration options are. As many of you already know, the standard way you log into Foundry is via a URL unique to you. So if you are using single sign-on or SCORM dispatch integrations, this will be different. Uh, but either way, the URL and this login page is going to be the same for students and administrators, again, unique to your institution or organization. 
but how many did you know, how many of you knew that you can actually customize this page? So you can add a logo. This appears in the top left corner of the admin and learner dashboards. So it's that consistent uh, area in the top left corner showing that this uh, page belongs to you. The background image can also be adjusted. For this, we usually recommend a kind of wide angle or wide view image, um, such as a bird's eye view of your campus. Maybe it's a notable building on campus or just a general picture of the quad and students walking around. Non-busy graphics can also work here as well. You don't want to distract too much or have too much on the page. The point is to direct students to that login. So when thinking about what you want to put here, consider that users can be viewing this on a wide range of screen sizes. So you want something that will still look good, even if it's just a sliver of the image and will be on a you know, tablet or cell phone. Or learners can also be accessing this on a computer with a pretty large monitor. So you want something that can work in any of these screen sizes. So work with your marketing team. I'm sure they have assets and images that may already exist that you can reuse. Lastly, on this page, you can customize the welcome language above the login on the right-hand side of the window. This doesn't have to be anything elaborate, something short, sweet, welcoming, or even instructional on, you know, confirming, use, make sure to use your institution assigned email address, something like that to make sure that login is, will go seamlessly. So if you do want to edit or add or update any elements on this page, you can contact our customer support team and be sure to include the assets as well as the language and we can make that change and update for you. I do recommend at a minimum adding your logo in so learners can see something familiar and know they're in the right place. Uh, this is also why it's important to have your communications plan fleshed out before creating any assignments to learners. By sending out a pre-launch announcement, so something before the invitation goes out for the assignment, learners will know what to be on the lookout for. They will know the URL, maybe the sender of the email, just so they don't confuse it with anything spam and can go and start taking and completing their assignments. And here are some other account configurations you can set once you actually log in. I discussed what training periods are and their benefits in depth in the previous session. Um, so if you missed that, I highly recommend going back to uh, learn a little bit more about what those benefits are. So I do recommend before setting up any of the assignments that you have your training period set up. And you might as well create what you need for this year as well as in the future. This will help uh, reinforce your consistent schedule that, uh, that you want to go with moving forward and make sure anyone um, goes forward has that same um, structure. Secondly, we also went into detail about this last week, and this is your user attributes. So locations, categories, labels, and roles. If you have these configured in Foundry before you uh, upload all your users, these will appear in the bulk upload template and it'll make it so much easier to add and organize your learners all in one step. And lastly, communications. So in Foundry, you can customize the invitation and reminder emails that gets sent to learners from the system. So when you create an assignment, the invitation, as well as what those reminders, uh, if you set them on a recurring cadence, what those look like. This is a great opportunity for you to tailor the messaging per segment and frame the training specifically for them. For example, if you have an invitation go out to new first year students, you can add a more welcoming uh, message to campus uh, more of an orientation approach, knowing that this is a new environment for them. 
Whereas for, for returning students, knowing that they should be familiar with this process, you can adjust the messaging for them. And for reminders, you can include different incentives or mandates depending on the audience as well. Now we'll switch gears into the uh, in-course configuration. So there are three page types that you can configure within a course. The policy pages, resource pages, and full configurable pages. If nothing else, I do recommend that you have at least one institutional policy included in each course. Um, some do allow multiple policies depending on the content in the module. So for example, alcohol EDU can have an alcohol and other drug policy, as well as a general institutional policy. So if you have a student handbook or if you do have um, a code of conduct, something like that, you can add that in. So you don't necessarily need to upload that specific type of policy it says in Foundry. It's just a suggestion based on that module and the other content that learners see, but ultimately you can upload whatever you want in there. This is something that is important to review each year before launching because you want to make sure that the current policy um, is up to date. So maybe in the past couple months, some policies were changed, you added something in, particularly around COVID. Um, you want to make sure that students are getting accurate information. You also want to remove any references from people who may no longer be working at your institution or maybe their physical office location moved. By policies, uh, learners are required to click it open, add their e-signature, and acknowledge that they have seen it in order for them to continue on in the course. So that means that we do have the recording where you can see um, who signed which version as well. So if you, let's say halfway through the year, change policies, you can uh, go back and track that per learner. Um, resources, they're a little bit different than policies in that the learners do not necessarily need to do that uh, acknowledgement and e-sign process. This is an opportunity for you to showcase any existing resources or initiatives on or off campus that relate to the topic that you want learners to know about. Um, so some courses do uh, come with pre-populated national resources, but I think this is learners should still know what is available to them locally. And lastly, of the types of pages you can configure are these full pages. These are at set placements throughout the course that allow you to customize the page by adding in a header, body text um, that does include URLs and links, as well as an image or a video. And these pages can really add so much value to, the suppl to supplement the generic material in the course. And it allows you to really apply your lens to the topic at hand. So you can show what initiatives you have and really what that topic means to you. For example, in Alcohol EDU, you can add information about any substance-free housing or groups or organizations on campus for learners who may be in recovery or who abstain. In Mental Wellbeing for Students, you can link out to a web page that houses all of your wellness events that students can bookmark. I've talked a lot about this the last two weeks about collaboration, and this is another perfect opportunity to do just that. So not only will other departments have ongoing events, maybe they have any news and updates or existing resources that they want to promote, but also reach out to any student organizations. They'll want to take advantage of this platform to get in front of all the new students to either market themselves, to advance their missions or increase participation as well. So you can approach any student leaders and ask them, you know, what do you want new students to know about you, especially if it's relevant to some of the course topics. Lastly, all the way on the right, this technically isn't a page type, but is something that you can configure per course. 
there is the option to add up to 10 custom survey questions to each of the pre and post course surveys. And this allows you to collect specific data points relevant to the work you're doing and to your community. Work with your IRB, or if you have research fellows, uh, leverage their expertise to craft your questions. Once you do launch a course with custom questions, we don't recommend adjusting them too much once they're launched. Maybe some edits here or there, some adjustments, but by keeping them consistent, you'll be able to tell a more meaningful impact story year over year and really measure the impact of the work that you're doing. So all of these opportunities do allow you to tailor the content for your students and your institution. We have plenty of resources on the Customer Hub that detail what the configuration options are per course, how to set everything up, um, as well as some suggested content as well. So I wanted to show you exactly what this looks like in course. So this is a sample policy page here. So as you can see, there is the policy page title, the text, and the uh, policy file. So if you click that link, it will open up the policy. Learners will have to read through it and then check the box to e-sign in order to advance. And this is a sample of what the custom page looks like. This will vary a little bit per course. And by that, I mean, you know, maybe the image is between the text and the header, um, but ultimately these elements will remain the same. So as you can see in the top left corner, we do the logo, and that is the logo that um, you will need to send to us to update. But this custom page here, you have the header, the image, and the text. Again, work with your marketing team, or if you have imagery and assets of familiar faces and places, that really will go a long way um, for your learners to have this content really resonate with them. Avoid stock imagery if you can. Okay, and with that, I'll jump into Foundry and show you around now where to actually set these things up. So I'll first start with some of the account configurations. So I mentioned training periods. And this will be different depending on which assignment technology you are on. If you are on the legacy assignments, you will not have this training period option. There will be a notification bar across the top, uh, basically with instructions on how to upgrade. But if you are upgraded to the new assignment logic, you can click on the settings and select training periods on the left-hand side. And this is where you can add different training periods, you can edit them, you can archive them as well. But um, like I said before, I do recommend if you have your uh, cadence and your schedule and structure on how you want to do training periods, why not set them up now? So that'll save you a step next year. So a few examples of this can be, um, you know, 2021 to 22 academic year, you can do new students, um, new students of 2021, you can do sanctioned students, things like that. Again, in last week's session, I did go into a few other uh, examples that you can use. So here's where you would actually go and set your training period. Next, I'll show you in the, the user attributes. So under users, we have locations. This is where you can set up the physical locations if you want. You can be as detailed as the street address, but really what Foundry needs to know to uh, make sure the correct version of the course is being viewed is just the state. And you can edit and update your custom categories as well in this section here. So these I do recommend doing before doing a bulk upload of new learners. It'll save you a step so you can add and organize at the same time. Next, let's talk about some communications. So you'll see here that we do have default invitations and default reminders. If I expand this carrot, you can see all underneath that is gonna be all the different versions and templates that were created. 
to create a new one, I'm going to click this plus icon um, on the right hand side of the table, which is going to take me to the editor. So this name across the top, this is internal. This is what's going to appear on that previous page. So for example, I can say, you know, new students fall 2021 invitation. Only internal, this is what I will reference it as. The subject line, you can adjust this. If you notice here, there are some uh, text, there's some text in here and the body with these brackets around it. I don't recommend fiddling around too much with what this means, with what is inside the brackets. This essentially means that it's uh, dynamic content. So to the learner, this isn't going to show up as org name. It will actually pull in what your specific organization name is. So if you can see here on the on the bottom, you can say do on. There's some other examples up top as well, but you can change those around, or if you have someone on your IT team who knows a few other, um, you know, dynamic information pieces that you can use, feel free to do that. But um, I would recommend not adjusting it too much. The subject line should be something that is familiar to the the learners. And again, this is why that pre-announcement email can really be beneficial. Where you can say, you know, on July 15th, you're going to get an email with this subject line and reference it earlier on so learners know that it's legitimate and that they should click it open into it. The text editor on the bottom is um, what we call WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So if you edit on the left-hand side on the editor, it will appear in real time on the preview to the right. And again, this is where I wanna highlight to not really adjust the bracketed names, especially when it comes to the due date. By having the due date, by keeping it in this dynamic format, you don't need to edit this every time. If you put in a hard deadline or a specific date, you're gonna have to come back and either create new invitations, new reminders for each assignment. And if you don't need to do that, I think this will just save you a lot of time, especially for those automated assignments where that due date can differ per learner. So we do have communications toolkits with samples of uh, what you can use for these emails. Um, and we also wanna highlight that we do have technical information on the bottom. So these are just some um, tr quick troubleshooting uh, and suggestions for learners. So they can come to Everfi's customer support learner support if they have any issues, as opposed to going to you or going to your IT team, we want to make sure that learners are being directed to the right place. And on the right is where you can see in that preview of what this is going to look like for learners. You can send yourself a test email if you want, put yours in there and it will be sent to your email address. So you can do this, you can create as many as you want. There are no limits to the invitations or reminders here. But as I said before, a few ways that you can customize this, you can include specific mandates um, or um, consequences if due dates are not met. You can frame it a little bit differently in the invitation. And you can also, uh, while you cannot adjust who the sender email is from, it will come from an automatic foundry address. You can have this sign off name be someone specific. So have it come from your the dean of students. Maybe there's the um, you know the director of the wellness center. Someone again that learners will know the name of um, and will take seriously that this is a priority coming from the top. Now I'll jump into the actual in-course configurations. So if you go to the content library, this will show you cards of all of the courses available in your account. So one that I will highlight now is the, let's see the new diversity uh, course. 
So I'll just show you, actually, let me go back to the other one. So in the past, within the past month, we did release a, an updated diversity, inclusion, and belonging for students course. As you can see, if you had access to the old course, we automatically added the new version in. We will eventually be taking out the old version of the course. And we, again, on our resource hub, have ways for you to distinguish which is the new versus the old. So what I'll show you now is how to just add configurations in here. And then I'll go into specifics on if you, let's say, configured an older version of a course, and now you have the new one, I'll show you how we recommend kind of transposing those configurations. So I can go directly to the configuration menu from here. So you can see this is broken out per module. So if I expand the introduction module, I can see each of these three buckets of elements is one page. So I can add a welcome page header, welcome page text, or an image. I can add a video as well and the policy. So to add, uh, I'll start with the welcome page here. So you just select add. It brings you to a pretty basic text editor. I can say, welcome new eagles. And this is what will appear on that header page. You could edit um, the font, whether it's bold, URL, you can add, um, or underline, you can add URLs. If you want to have this course available in Spanish as well, the platform does not automatically translate your configuration. What you would do is right now I said, welcome new Eagles in English. I would just toggle over to Spanish and then I would have to uh, add it in in Spanish. I do not know Spanish, so I'm not going to attempt to do that, but that is something that you would do if you want to again offer this course and have your configurable pages translated. So I add my header can add in the text. I'll just do sample welcome text. We can have that. And then an image. So an image, you can either do a, a file upload. You can add a JPEG, GIF, or PNG, or you can add a URL here. If I have an image, I can add here. Okay. So I just grab this URL. Uh, we do recommend alternate text. This is for those learners who may be using a screen reader. So now I added all the elements to this welcome page. The only requirement for the page to actually appear in course is the header. So this is not available for all courses, but I'll show you here now. If you select preview, you can actually see what this uh, specific page looks like. And directly to it. So here's what this page looks like. You can see the image. This is the header text, and then this is the sample text as well. The other option to preview is in the top right corner here. This preview basically is an ungated um, version of the course. So you can click through the entire experience. So if you're curious to see what page comes before a configurable page or what comes after, so you can then better decide what content you want to put in, I would recommend doing this bigger preview section as well. In terms of policies, similarly to the other page I just did, you will need to add in the policy page header and the test. If you want to add the actual policy, you'll select that button in the top right of that little window. You can either upload a PDF, you can enter rich text. So if you just wanna paste the copy into the window itself, you can do that or a URL. 
So if I click next, I can do policy name, do sexual misconduct policy, and I'll do a sample um, document here. I'm just going to put in a random URL, but this can be, you know, for example, if you have the policy listed on your website, you can put the URL directly in here, which I'll use. Google.com for now. The same goes with the translations here. If you want to add your policy in Spanish, you will just need to toggle to the different language and upload the policy and name there. Once I select next, I can now apply it to whatever courses I want or um, this and the specific type. So for this specific course, um, and we have this outlined and mapped out in our configuration guide, but you can specify what policy within the course you want this to apply to. If you want, for example, let's say this policy applies to, can be also used in alcohol EDU. I can also select this and multi-select. So I can add this one policy, multiple, two multiple courses at one time. So this can be really relevant if you do a student handbook and you want to apply it to all courses, you could do it this way pretty easily. Secondly, you're going to have to select the locations. And this is where locations come into play. Like I said before, that you can actually can customize what policies appear for each location. So if this is just my Boston policy, I can confirm and add it in. I can then go through this process again and add a different policy for my San Francisco location if I want to. And if I confirm, the policy will be added to that page and I can then again go back and add in the title and text if I want to. Um, what's nice about this, up, we, this is a recent update as well, you can now view which module has policies in it and what is already added. So in this case, each module does support a policy, so you can go and click through to add each one. So as I mentioned before, this is one of the newer courses that we recently updated. Let's say if you last year launched the older diversity, equity, and inclusion for students, and you want to transpose those policies, here's how I recommend doing it. And we also have steps on the resource hub outlining this as well. But I would actually open this up into a new tab. Um, so I'm going to actually duplicate this to open up in another window here. So on one of my windows, I'm going to have the new course. On the other window, I'm going to go back to the content library and open up the old version. So diversity, equity, and inclusion for students is the old version. So for those text-based configurations, I'm just gonna copy and paste them over to the new window. So for example, in this introduction, this custom page here, I'm just gonna copy my welcome eagles, flip over to the new page, already in here, but I would just go and edit it and paste it in here and the same with the text. For policies though, there is a bit of an easier way to do this. So similar to what I showed you before in that uh, you can check the boxes of what courses you want this to apply to, what you can do is I'm in the new course now. If I want to add a policy, I can click this button. Let's say, I'm sorry, let me go, let me go back here for a second. So let's say I'm in my old version of the course. What I can do is go to the policy and click edit from here. So I'm editing the policy from the old course. So if nothing changed, confirm the URL is still up to date. Um, make sure the name is still up to date. But here what I can do is basically just um, select the course that I want it to apply to. So if I want it to add it to the new course, 
I'll just check the box there and you can leave the configuration in the old course. It's not going to do anything. Um, but now you can just apply it to the new one. So this is a quick way to then just update the policy and which we recommend as the kind of minimum to, um, to have your courses ready to launch. Again, we do have um, specific steps and instructions on how to do this quickly and easily. And the last configuration uh, in course I'll talk about is the surveys. So all of our student courses do a pre-course and post-course surveys. Uh, if you toggle over to the survey window, you can then select which specific survey you want to configure. So if I select configure in here, it's gonna take me to the builder. So I can add in the questions. You will need to add in a new section um, because all of your custom questions basically will be in this new section in the course. So you can do the name, so, you know, custom or you know, university questions. Click add a section. And from here, you can add in your questions. So we do have different uh, formats. You can do multiple choice, text input, integer or decimal. And from there, depending on what you pick, there are gonna be uh, additional options. So you can do single select, multi-select, require it or not. Um, overall, all of the surveys are skippable. So learners don't necessarily need to go through each of them. So I'll do, um, now, what dorm do you live in, for example? I can add that question. And once you add the question, you can then add in the answers, responses here. So like I said, this, will, this uh, workflow will be a little different depending on the types of question you pick. So if you do have a text input um, or the integers, you can just adjust that as you go. So once you have your questions in, you can always hit preview just to see what this will look like. I didn't add much here, but you can see in the preview and back. I highly recommend editing and confirming what your questions are before hitting publish in general. Um, once you do hit publish, that basically acts as a um, display or not display in the actual courses themselves. So if the course is live, Again, just double check, make sure the questions look how you want before actually publishing it there. And so these custom survey questions, the responses can be found where the other survey responses are. There is a filter to display your custom survey question section within there. So I won't go into reporting today. That is something that we will do further down the line once you all have actually launched your courses. With that, I will um, wrap up with some pro tips and suggestions to have, um, have your account actually meet your needs and your training plan. You've heard it before, and I'll say it again, collaborate with other stakeholders, groups, departments around and off campus. Uh, they, may be, they may have resources and content readily available, and it will be a great opportunity for learners to start getting familiar with that. This can also help with uh, buy-in from an adoption standpoint as well. So if you go to the residence life director, for example, and get some content for one of the configurable pages, they may be more likely to help enforce deadlines and mandates to students as well. And while all these configuration opportunities are exciting and you're probably imagining all the possibilities of what you can do, don't let that delay your launch. If you are a small team, or if you are the whole team, um, start small with what's required, like having the current policies. One of the most common causes for delay I have seen and heard with, from customers is uh, waiting on policies to be updated. So start that conversation now so you can launch on time for your schedule. You can always go back and add in more configurations to courses, um, and this goes across the board with all the configurations. They will appear for any new learners assigned it, but those who already um, have been assigned it will see the, the version before the configuration. 
And lastly, use links and URLs where possible. This avoids having outdated PDFs and now incorrect information out there that you may have forgotten to update amongst all the other things you have to do. Uh, this is especially relevant for policies and the configurable pages. For policies, if you end up adjusting the URL, you can always set up a redirect, um, which will be a lot easier than logging back into Foundry and swapping out the PDF. And also for custom pages, if you want to include upcoming events that the Wellness Center is hosting, like a meditation or yoga, uh, direct that to a web page that will be maintained instead of having to update this course each month or week. So when you're thinking about the configurations, uh, use content that will be evergreen for the whole year. So you don't need to update it, or you can just go and update it during your annual account audit. Well, and that is uh, all of the account configurations and in-course configurations.